In the 1960s, our species took its first steps into a vast new realm. But NASA astronauts would soon find they weren't the only ones charting a course around the Earth and the Moon. I think the last few decades have proven that NASA is definitely covering up something when it comes to the connection between UFOs and our astronauts. But what is it? Could NASA be hiding the knowledge that by entering space, humanity may have crossed a line that threatens every person on the planet? A global effort has begun. Secret files hidden from the public for decades detailing every UFO account are now available to the public. We are about to uncover the truth behind these classified documents. Find out what the government doesn't want you to know. Alien Files, unsealed. Exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Baltimore, March 14th, 1989. Donald Ratch, an American ham radio operator, intercepts a message unlike anything he's heard before. The signal source is the space shuttle Discovery in orbit around the planet. Even more remarkable is the content of the message itself. Houston, uh, this is Discovery. We still have the alien spacecraft uh, on third balance. Discovery is allegedly face to face with a UFO. Moments later, the spacecraft reports that it has lost power. At this point, Mission Control instructs the crew to switch to another frequency. Ratch is stunned by what he hears, and he's not the only one. Other ham radio operators intercept the same message, and some record it. Despite the many witnesses, NASA quickly denies any such exchange ever took place. Why would America's space agency deny possible evidence of UFOs in Earth's backyard? As it turns out, the discovery incident is just one of dozens of alleged UFO encounters reported by astronauts over the last 50 years. 1961, President John F. Kennedy appeals to Congress and the American public to support his vision of putting a man on the moon. Now it is time to take longer strides. Time for a great new American enterprise. Time for this nation to take a clearly leading role in space achievement, which in many ways may hold the key to our future on Earth. The race to be the first nation to set foot on another world is on. When Kennedy put forth the national goal for America to put a man on the moon, the facade was it was to beat the Russians. But it was about a lot more than that. While NASA is introducing its heroes and their achievements to captivate the masses, behind the scenes, a very different show is going on. June 1965, Gemini 4 Commander James McDivitt allegedly captures startling images of an unidentified object that approached their capsule in orbit. McDivitt later states the UFO had a very definite shape, a cylindrical object. It was white. It had a long arm that stuck out on the side. A few months later, in December 1965, Gemini 7 astronauts Frank Borman and James Lovell are recorded in this communication with Mission Control. Echo here, 10 o'clock high. Uh, this is Houston. Say again, 7. But instead of breaking the news to the world, the agency allegedly makes every effort to keep these incidents secret. After many of the Gemini astronauts started to see things in space, they came up with code words like fire, bogey, even Santa Claus to describe craft that they were seeing flying outside of the spaceship. Spurred on by a rash of sightings, both on the ground and in orbit, in 1966, the U.S. government sets up a special committee led by leading nuclear physicist Edward Condon to investigate the growing UFO phenomenon. Unsealed case file. The Condon Committee. The Condon Committee reviews hundreds of UFO files, including those sightings reported by NASA astronauts. When the group submits its final report in late 1968, it concludes the incidents are definitely unexplained. 
and in the highest category of credibility. Nonetheless, NASA conducts no further investigations of the Gemini sightings. Coming up, we see the Gemini mission give way to the Apollo program and investigate a trail of UFO sightings leading all the way to the moon. Alien Files Unsealed During the 1960s, American astronauts allegedly report a growing number of UFO sightings in orbit. But some experts believe NASA kept these reports from the public. NASA not only knew about an ET presence, but that it was dealing with an ET presence on a regular basis. By late 1968, NASA's Apollo program is ready to leave Earth orbit for the first time on a mission to orbit the moon. Apollo 8 is commanded by Frank Borman and piloted by Jim Lovell. With them is Lunar Module pilot Bill Anders. Their flight path takes them to the dark side of the moon and out of communication range with mission control. When the spacecraft re-emerges, the following exchange with mission control is recorded. Roger. Please be informed there is a Santa Claus. It's a shocking revelation. According to alleged NASA radio code, Apollo 8 has indicated the presence of a UFO in close proximity to the moon, a world they are scheduled to land on in just seven months' time. Despite public denials, by the time of Apollo 8, NASA was beginning to take the possibility of strange occurrences on the moon seriously. Unsealed case file, the catalog of reported lunar events. Released in 1969, the catalog of lunar events remains the single most complete listing of recorded lunar anomalies from the year 1500 to 1967. Reports include observations of strange colors, streaks of light, and mists. The timing of the study raises a number of questions. Did NASA already have evidence of alien activity on the moon? And if it did, what would happen if the public ever found out? Would the agency be forced to put its Apollo plans on permanent hold? Today, many experts believe that NASA gets its astronauts to sign an agreement, giving the agency final authority about what they can and cannot say to the public about their missions. Mercury astronaut Gordon Cooper was the last American to fly into space alone. In a letter read at a UN meeting on November 9th, 1978, Gordon Cooper wrote, I believe these extraterrestrial vehicles and their crews are visiting this planet from other planets, which obviously are a little more technically advanced than we are here on Earth. I feel that we need to have a top level coordinated program to scientifically collect and analyze data from all over Earth. If Cooper is right about extraterrestrials visiting Earth, then what would the astronauts find when they at last set foot on another world? Well, I kind of have two moons in my head, I guess, whereas most people just have one moon. But every once in a while, I do think of a second moon, you know, the one that I recall from up close. July 18th. 1969, Apollo 11 takes off on its historic voyage to the moon. The mission commander is Neil Armstrong. Piloting the command module is Michael Collins. Buzz Aldrin is the pilot of the lunar module that will set down on the surface. Hundreds of millions around the world are glued to TV sets, watching events unfold minute by minute. But two days into the mission, the crew learns they may have another audience. They reportedly observe an unidentified object moving alongside their module. The three astronauts are stunned, but are allegedly unable to discuss the object for millions to hear. The astronauts consider the only plausible explanation is that the object is the SIVB, the third stage of their booster rocket, jettisoned shortly after liftoff two days earlier. 
they ask Houston for confirmation of how far the SIVB is from the module. But the answer they receive sends shockwaves through the crew. Apollo 11, Houston, the S-4B is about 6,000 nautical miles from you now, over. It didn't make sense. The object they were observing was at a much closer range. To this day, the alleged object has not been identified, and NASA has never officially acknowledged its presence during the mission. But if the astronaut's story is true, Apollo 11 wasn't alone. And it's not the last controversy surrounding their historic mission. I think the last few decades have proven that NASA is definitely covering up something when it comes to the connection between UFOs and our astronauts. But what is it? Alien Files Unsealed. During the 1960s, NASA astronauts allegedly reported multiple encounters with UFOs in orbit around Earth. It's an otherworldly drama that would reach its climax with Apollo 11. July 20th, 1969, the lunar module touches down on the moon. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Rocket twang, tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. A few hours later, an estimated 500 million people watch as Neil Armstrong becomes the first human to set foot on another world. I'm going to step off the land now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. It's a milestone achievement in human history. But many experts believe that during their brief stay, the Apollo astronauts saw much more than the rest of the world was permitted to see. During the two and a half hour moonwalk, the broadcast is interrupted for a period of two minutes. The world waits with bated breath for the signal to be restored, wondering what has gone wrong. But then, just as suddenly as the signal disappeared, it returns and the broadcast resumes. NASA insists the problem resulted from one of the onboard television cameras overheating, interfering with the transmission. But many experts question the plausibility of this explanation and what happened during those missing minutes. According to author Otto Binder, not everyone was left in the dark. Binder claims to have later been in contact with independent ham radio operators whose equipment bypassed NASA's broadcasting outlets and picked up an extraordinary exchange between the astronauts and Houston. I was going to believe that. Whistle, whistle. I would say that there were other spaceships that lined up in the other side of the crater. There, there they are, and they're watching us. Is it possible? Did Armstrong and Aldrin really see UFOs on the moon during those mysterious missing minutes? Maurice Chatelaine, former chief of NASA communication systems, would confirm aspects of the story in 1979, stating that Armstrong had indeed reported seeing two UFOs on the rim of a crater. According to Chatelaine, the encounter was common knowledge in NASA but nobody has talked about it until now. They also reported what they believe to be mining equipment. Are extraterrestrials mining the moon? And was the lunar camera blackout really a simple malfunction? Anytime we look at the communication taking place between CAPCOM and astronauts in space, there are two channels in use. There's the public channel relaying information. There's also the secret channel or the Department of Defense line where they can cut off the public feed and communicate securely between the astronauts and CAPCOM. Many ufologists believe the broadcast blackout may have prevented this stunning development from being revealed to the world. Some also claim that Aldrin actually captured film footage of the lunar UFOs, only to see it confiscated by the agency after the Apollo 11 crew's return to Earth. Additional evidence has surfaced, pointing to an alleged NASA cover-up. Photos of huge domes, tunnel openings, 
lunar cities, and other artificial structures have been documented. If we look at some of the reports that actually have taken place where when we've gone to the moon, sent our astronauts there, they report seeing a full-on extraterrestrial base. It's possible that what we photographed on the moon in entirety was never shown to the general public. As of today, structures of possible alien origin have been allegedly discovered in no fewer than 44 different regions of the lunar surface. In my personal opinion, uh, there are alien bases on the moon, and they understood that there were a lot of political factors as to why the Apollo missions had to go ahead and why there had to be a certain uh, degree of uh, a manned presence on the moon. But at a certain point, the aliens said, well, this is our turf, um, you don't belong here, and don't come back. Soon, they may again have visitors from Earth. The sun is a massive nuclear fusion reactor, and one of the byproducts of this massive release of energy is an invisible substance known as helium-3. The Earth's atmosphere prevents helium-3 from reaching its surface, but the moon has no atmosphere. For billions of years, the surface has been bombarded by a constant stream of helium-3. Some ufologists believe that alien spacecraft are powered by fusion engines and that the fuel for those engines is helium-3. They are convinced that extraterrestrials are mining the substance on the lunar surface. Both China and Russia have stated the primary objective of any future mining operations is the extraction of helium-3. Whoever controls its supply may control the future of planet Earth and space exploration. Experts believe it won't be long before the United States is forced to join this new space race. But what will happen when Earth's three great rival powers come face to face with the aliens reported to already be in control of the moon? There's some type of reality to the extraterrestrial presence, not only here on Earth, but obviously out there, possibly on our moon, possibly on other planets. Will these new lunar missions spark an interplanetary conflict that will engulf the Earth? And will the ultimate prize be control of the final frontier?